Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. And we are back once again with more Project Playtime from the series that just keeps on giving to Lost Bits. If you haven't watched my first video, I highly recommend it as we checked out some really cool unused levels in the game, but in this video we'll be diving even deeper. This game has numerous unused graphics and models left over in the game, as well as several cosmetic items that aren't currently obtainable in normal means. And there's so much more to talk about that there definitely needs to be at least one more part for the series, so stay tuned for that video soon. Anyways, smacky wacky that like button, let's check out some more Project Playtime Lost Bits. Alright, so to start, there are a whole bunch of cosmetic items in the game that I have that aren't currently publicly accessible. Now, I don't want this to come off as a brag, but I was given access to all of the cosmetics in the game so I could show them off in my stream when the game first came out. Yeah, I definitely don't think the devs know how I break open their games the way I do. Anyways, I made a little chart of all of the items I have, and then crossed out what is currently accessible in the game's battle pass, as well as a few of the daily deals I saw before the video went live. Now, most of the more basic stuff, like most of the masks, shoes, pants, and monster skins will be coming soon, be it in a future battle pass or store bundle, but I wanted to quickly show you guys some highlights of what's to come. For the hats, there's a jack-o'-lantern head, and I reckon this was meant to have released around Halloween time, and it might not until next Halloween, which, as of the making of this video, is still quite far away. As such, this makes me want to speculate that maybe originally there were plans to release this game before Halloween this year. Then, as far as hands go, there's a cool legendary rare gold gauntlet, a dinner plate set where some utensils replace the fingers, there's a hand with a bunch of graffiti on it, a Mickey Mouse style glove hand, a wooden hand, as well as this one that's made in a voxel style. This one's one of my favorites. Then, strangely enough, although anime girl hair was added to the battle pass, there's also an anime girl dress, socks, as well as shoes. A lot of the other things you get in the Battle Pass come as an outfit bundle where you get all the parts, so it's kinda lame that so far you can only get the hair, and I guess the rest will eventually appear in the store or in the next Battle Pass or something. Next, I've heard rumors that this legendary rare mob hoodie is only supposed to be available for developers of the game. This ruby skin is really cool, I think. And there's also a cool party grab pack that's not obtainable yet, and this changes your guns to a bunch of solo cups, and your pack is covered in disposable paper plates and party decorations. There's also a few emotes that you can't currently obtain. There's a clapping one, a nervous finger touch one, as well as one of my favorites, spinning hands. Then, as far as the monster skins go, all of the really cool ones like Chicken Nuggy feet here are in the Battle Pass, and besides just basic color swaps, only like the silver versions of each monster aren't currently obtainable, as well as the Black Widow skin for Mommy Longlegs, which I think is pretty cool. And although I seemingly have all of the skins in the game, there are actually a few more referenced or found partially in the files that I actually don't have either. The first of these is a cosmic hand type, and this one doesn't have a thumbnail graphic for it in the files, so besides assuming it's going to be cosmic in nature based on the name, we don't really have a good idea of what it's going to look like. And then secondly, I mentioned it briefly in my first video, but there are graphics as well as a unique model for a buggy wuggy skin for Huggy, where he will appear in a much lower poly form, and I gotta say, this will probably be my favorite skin. But yeah, like I said, I'm 99.92% .92 sure that most of, if not all of these skins, will be eventually obtainable, so keep your eyes peeled, it's probably only a matter of time. And now, for the rest of this video, we'll be taking a look at several 3D models, as well as some textures that are left over normally unused in the files of the game, at least as of the current update that's available at the time of making this video. And I say normally unused, as many of these are actually found in the unused levels that we went over in my last video, so some of them might look familiar to you if you've watched it. Anyways, pretty much all of these are tucked away in a folder titled Deprecated. Yes, the developers spelled deprecated wrong, there are actually several instances where spellcheck would have come in handy, like for conveyor blets here. And despite being found in the deprecated folder, a number of these models do seem to still be used, so I'm going to try and pick apart which ones are and aren't used, at least mostly. There are a whole bunch of miscellaneous things like storage shelf base, or some machinery parts that frankly aren't that interesting, so I'll be skipping them in this video. First up, we got an early version of the toy deposit chute flipped. 
Now, although the tubes can be seen on either side of the machine in the game, this one appears to be early since it has a blue trim around the monitor. It's also lacking the overhang thing on top of the screen, the plate on the right side is in a different spot, and it just looks a little more rough around the edges in general, figuratively and literally. Also related to the toy deposit machines, there's this black cube that also is listed as a toy deposit. I guess, just based on the name, this black cube might have been a really early placeholder for the toy deposits earlier on in development. Then next up we have this model known as Toy Machine, and this actually appears to be a leftover from Chapter 1 of Poppy Playtime, as it appears that this is the base for one of the machines seen in the Toy Factory room there, but here without the eyes and such. Both featuring a Toy Factory area, this machine might have once been planned to make a return in the factory map here, or it was at least used as a placeholder. Then next up we got a whole bunch of now unused models that were once used in the early version of the theater map. We have an early version of the dome used for the ceiling, an arch for the stage, some track lighting, play stairs, maybe stairs meant to be used in a play that would be seen on the theater stage or something, we got the clouds and backdrop we saw in the early theater map, some curtains which I don't think were even seen there, the placeholder chairs we saw, and then there's also a bigger model of the entire main theater room. Also seen in the early version, we have the old signs for the train station, the theater itself as was reused from chapter 1, as well as this welcome sign used in the ticketing area of the theater. And of course, I can't forget about the really creepy Huggy that was seen on the early stage, and I believe this is also a remnant left over from Chapter 1. Now before we move on to the next maps, left over normally unused are models of a computer as well as some security cameras that were seen throughout the early maps, including the one that was enlarged as a placeholder for the theater projector. Now I didn't mention this in my previous video since I thought nothing of it at the time, but found out of bounds was this desk setup with a bunch of monitors. I'll talk about this a bit more in my next video, but it turns out that similar to how the cameras work in Amogus, there would have been a computer section in the map where a player could interact with it to channel some Five Nights at Freddy's energy and look through some security cameras, I guess to see where the monster was. This doesn't seem super useful in a Dead by Daylight based game like this, so I can see why it was scrapped, but it does seem like a decent amount of work was put into this mechanic. Now moving on to the early version of the Toy Factory, we saw the placeholder models used for the railings here. And interestingly enough, these railings used are actually meant to be for a hospital bed, so this is kinda weird. Then moving on to parts seen in the early version of the Foundry or Steel Mill map, which should be coming to the game in the future, we got it all from the big crucible in the center area of the map, various machine parts, the wheels, the fans, and pretty much all the rest of the stuff found around the area. I'm fairly certain these are just placeholders and there will be proper models when the map is fully introduced, or at the very least they will be given some textures. Then back to the menus, you might have noticed that in the background of the toy box screen there are two cutouts, one of Huggy as well as one of Boogiebot. Well, there's actually one more cutout left in the files that isn't seen here and I don't think it's seen anywhere else in the game, and that's this one with Huggy in a hard hat holding a hammer as we've seen in previous chapters of Poppy Playtime. In my last video, I also went over a developer test map where, yeah, there are a few more objects that never made it into the maps normally seen in the current build. These include this pressure pad display post, as well as this fella that was used on it to indicate how many people were standing on the pressure pad. There's a model of the placeholder buttons that were used to test the walls coming down, as well as the cut bridge mechanic. This workshop machine thing ended up getting scrapped, and lastly we have this thing listed as a lobby background. Now in my last video, I mentioned that I thought these floating things that were seen on this lobby background in the test map were a test of the waypoint graphics, but now seeing and knowing what this platform is called, it's looking more like this was actually a test of how the lobbies once looked like in the game. And that makes more sense too, as these plus box graphics are also similar to the ones seen on the main menu and will be coming soon. So yeah, I guess initially, as players would join a lobby, their character would pop up on screen in certain spots, much like in Dead by Daylight, and you could likely click on these boxes to invite a player. And again, we'll talk about this more in my next video, but yeah, this is basically confirmed by some early gameplay footage. Then moving away from the stuff found in the unused maps, there are also a few more models that I don't think I've seen elsewhere. We've got this window that seems to use a similar texture to other unused objects I've covered from previous Poppy games. 
And then we also have this wooden box that appears to be almost the same as the one I mentioned that is found out of bounds in the survivor tutorial stage in my last video. Although I did think that this might have been meant for a scrapped puzzle mechanic, as a few of you let me know in the comments, it looks like this box was once planned to open using this handle and then a player could hide inside of it, perhaps an early version of the locker hiding system. Now I don't recall seeing this anywhere else, but here we got a P penny. Just speculating a bit here, but pennies being a type of coin, this might have been an old 3D model for the in-game purchasable currency before it was renamed to Playcoins. Next up, the early placeholder model of the survivor characters that we saw left over unused back in Poppy Chapter 2 actually returns here. At first, frankly, I didn't think much of this model, but it turns out that there's actually an animation that was added for it that we didn't originally see. And this animation is for the charge roll move that the survivors have in this game to quickly gain a boost of speed. So it looks like this animation was probably added sometime not long after the release of Chapter 2. Then to add to this, although these spiderwebs are seen in the game when Mommy Longlegs shoots them out, I was surprised to see that I was able to load the animations of the placeholder survivor model onto the spiderwebs. And the results are, uh, pretty unsettling to say the least. Yeah, this makes me feel pretty uncomfortable. And last up, speaking of character moves and such, there's actually a leftover graphic of a seemingly scrapped move for the survivors where they would... use a rifle? Yep, matching up with the other UI graphics for character moves, it looks like maybe at one point the survivors could also strap up. Based on how the game looks and plays, I don't see this coming back to the game, but honestly, I just find the idea of it pretty funny. And with that wraps up this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Like I teased, throughout this video, there is a lot of really cool stuff to talk about still, so I will be making at least one more video on this game, and trust me, you won't want to miss the next one. It very well might be the most in-depth look into a game development we've ever seen on this series, so be sure to subscribe to make your way back to the channel when it's up. Anyways, till then, be sure to check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.